Hello, Supreme Commanders. It's Sunday early afternoon here, deep inside my main base, found somewhere inside the UK. The sun is shining, and I'm very happy to announce that it's only taken the best part of do two decades, I beg your pardon, but someone has finally figured out how to use the cheapest experimental unit in the game. That's right. Take a closer look at the game setup today. Introducing our two teams, got ourselves a four versus four, going down on a new map for the channel. This one called Infernal Lake. Average rating 13.33. This one, so bringing out all the threes. AI balanced it, and so that, of course, means the two favourite teams, the Hotties versus the Coolies, giving it large. Just 14 points between the two teams. Uh, average, well, between the players on the two teams. And so it's about as close as you can get. And with that, gather round, get yourselves comfortable. And let's watch some action. All right, so here we go. Crowd cheering us in. Yes, I appreciate it, but you know what? We don't need you today because it's not a tournament game. But instead, let's see if we can bring the game sounds on in. There's we go. Disappear, please, all together. All right, let's unpause the game and take a look at our two teams. We'll do away with that little menu bar there as well. All right, so as we said, it's the Hotties versus the Coolies, which is always the way when it's an AI balanced game. 20 by 20 map. And if we take a look at the black border on this one, I'm guessing it's probably going to be about an 18 by 18. It certainly looks greater than 15. And if we have a quick little look out, just to uh, reduce the sounds there a little bit, we we'll take a look at the uh, fireys up top first. And we can see there the team here covering both the uh, three positions at the north and the one position here in the northeast, and by uh, extension, uh, the coolies down there covering the south and the one position down here on the southwest. And so no island is completely one team or the other. It is very much to fight for, with the exception of these two tiny opposite islands there. Lots of water in the middle. And so with that said and done, let's start introducing our players. And I think we'll start over here in the one o'clock position and work our way clockwise entirely. Uh, mixing things up right good and proper here so in the first position here is Mizo or Mizo uh, M I double Z O two the 1137 rated Cybern there in Burgundy Red going first land and so we'll go entirely clockways on this one down here in orange it's Ferv a 1344 rated UEF player uh, also going first land and uh, maybe the first time we've seen him on the channel as well Moving further to the south down here is Willow Wispy, the highest rated player today. 1979 rated, going Aeon and starting also first land there in the Cyan. Uh, moving further on to his west, in no particular team order, down here is Buttons. 1473 rated UEF player, going first air and second air and third air. Can he make this pay? Let's see, he should know what he's doing. He's got a very fast Hydra there. He's already got the mass going for three. I'd be really surprised if he can make this pay. Let's have a little look. What are these engineers going to bag themselves? Well, that's just mass coming out of there. No energy whatsoever. And so it would appear here that we're going to get some storage from buttons and 200, 170, 160. Oh, he's going to get away with it, I think. I think he's just about going to get away with it there. And so perhaps some of my... Oh, 40, 30, 20. Oh, there he is. He's stalling just about. Just about stalling. And so, yeah, three air factories right off the bat. Just with one hydro to fund it all is a last close. But no cigar. Further then, down in the corner is Ricky Tiki Tavi. The 789 rated UEF there in electric blue. First land, second air. Gotta be man of the match with a name like that. Absolutely look it. Love it. Ricky Tiki Tavi there. And then uh, uh, UEF also. And then uh, here we've got Superintendent in Lilac. 1063 rated. Another Cybern there. Going first land, second land, and third land. Moving further to the north. Back onto the hottest team now is Juduka 1972. We featured this guy before. We'll refer to him as Judo as we did last time then. Seraphin 1508 rated. This guy, first land and second land, looks like third land. And then fourth air, uh, still under construction. And then last but not least, for the hotties, and indeed everybody, is L to the Aeon. 
1362 also going seraphim despite the name there in ferrari red first land second air that's uh, about to complete and take a little look out there l to the iron already moving his commander down into the drink no doubt to assist juduko judo over here let's just call him versus superintendent there the 1063 trying to kick him off the island of course judo being the only uh coolie beg your pardon uh superintendent being the only coolie here on the island i do beg your pardon and so two versus one and here we see superintendent already going for the tech two now it's absolutely vital if he's cyber that he finished this upgrade way before the two commanders arrive because he's going to want to get at least two or three tech two surplus turrets at a minimum and or the tech one again just just depends on how the two hotties going to be going for the gun quick look over here what's happening on the other side and it's uh, willow wispy versus ferv of course willow wispy there 1979 rated versus 1344 and so willow wispy here is like well over 600 points ahead of his opponent and that at least for now looks like it's going to be a one-on-one -on -one, potentially a two versus one here as uh, Ricky Tiki is making a move in, unless that's Buttons. It is, of course, Buttons now. I've said it. And so it's going to be a two versus one versus the weaker player there. So we could be starting to see a little bit of a wheelie motion, potentially. If we see Firth go down. Quick look over here. Just kind of feel like a lot of what happens here depends on his superintendent, Abel. And you can see that he's already queued his Tech 2 Cerberus turrets out ahead of time. He's got three of them there in the making, as well as the radar here. And I assume those are queued out of the commander, and they are. That never used to be possible to upgrade and then issue orders from a pre-upgraded commander, but I've seen that's been possible for a number of years now. And there he goes. Upgrade completes. Minute 5 and 42 seconds. Quick look over here. Looks like Ferv is going for the gun. He's 52% complete on that, but looks like Buttons is going to give a little surprise and just see exactly how quick this is. When does he realize? Well, maybe now, and certainly now. Drops in a couple of engineers to assist the upgrade, but I wouldn't be surprised to find Buttons focusing on those engineers ASAP. He's bringing Tech 1 bombers in as well. It's like Maizo trying to help out a little bit, providing some annoyance down here with Tech 1 Bombers. But we'll always well aware of that. Picks those up before they manage to get anywhere close to target. Maizo does provide some air over here, but yeah, as we suspected there. Button's taking out all of the land units. Is now shooting for the commander. I'm surprised he didn't go for the engineers. It's like he's going to come back. And there he is, goes for the engineers. But Ferv there gets himself the gun. And with that, Ferv has got to move. He's got a shed load of Aurora here. He turns and starts engaging those Auroras. But it's going to be one shot, one kill now. Looks like Willow, aware of that, starts backing off. Sure, Ferv lost almost half his health. But he did get the all-important gun. Quick check-in over on the other side. Just curious here. Was Superintendent able to get his point defense down? And he was... He's got four of the Cerberus turrets. He's got Judo moving in with the gun. I'm not sure you can keep pushing into that. Yes, Cyber and Point Defense not great, but when there's four of them, as well as a few units as well, and looks like Judo says, I know. I'm already running away. And he's lost about two-thirds of the health. And now it's L to the Aeon's turn to just get a little bit of damage as well. Loses about 10% as well. Judo's already repping up. Quick check back over on the other side. And now Willow. Oh, wispy Willow. Of course, with the Yeon, got the sniper gun, both arms. And with that, Fur finds himself in a spot of bother. Surrounded by Aeon. Again, this is, guys, you want to focus on the Aeon tanks, not the other commander, at least initially. Otherwise, these tanks just can continue putting damage down on your commander. The enemy commander is going to put damage down onto you whether you shoot him or not. So you may as well go for the units. Once you've killed the units, they can't damage you anymore. And therefore, they're getting a crucial bank of vets there right at the end. 2,000 hit points. But of course, Willow left up here. 
half health concert free to continue blap in a way there and at this point ferv would do better than to continuously trickle units in hold them back let them build up perhaps just panicking a little there i'm sure at 1344 rating he knows this and yeah attention no doubt elsewhere quick look over here now on the navy we've got our first little engaged going down over here thanks to buttons it's got himself a frigate with five kills no doubt mainly bagging itself build capacity judo's trying to respond with some artillery like that move certainly the seraphim continue chasing it down now it's a two on one with the subs the subs have got three kills and that's going to be last kill there, as well as the frigate going down, thanks to that artillery. Nice move there from Judo. Quick check back over here. And Ferv now finding himself getting picked on by a couple of the coolies, working together with their submarine fleet here. And that's going to force Ferv out of the water. 1300, of course, he's got nowhere to go. It's either die in the sea for nothing, or at least get what you can. 900 hit points. He's nowhere near his next rank of vet. And it looks like these two subs here belonging to Buttons are going to get him. Buttons backs off. Perhaps thinking... Well, leaves him with 300 hit points. Well, Willow Wispy says, no, you don't. Brings in a sub of his own. 200 hit points. Ferv gets out on land to be shot and goes down. And with that, 10 minutes, 17 seconds. Ferv, the first player to go out there. Willow Wispy technically getting the kill. And to be fair, probably put more damage onto him than anybody else. But in no small part, thanks to Buttons, two versus one. Despite the already massive disparity there in points. And with that, the hot is down to just three players take a quick look as we approach the 11th minute as well what's going on economy there we see full share going on what was left of Ferv space getting handed over to l to the aeon was uh to confuse matters further playing as a seraphim quick look over here so we've got some forward manufacturing facilities that were belonging to Ferv, and it looks like willow there is just gonna brush those aside couple of point defense here but that's not going to be much use when you've got a sniper commander going after them do manage to bag themselves a single aurora but that's not really worth it and it's now you think right something's going to happen here real quick l to the young and you see there he's rushing himself a tech 2 factory upgrade there i'm wondering you know you can have to hurry up with this if you want to hang on to any of this Quick look elsewhere, all relatively quiet. The front line over here is very stabilized. Superintendent managed to lock that down nice and quick. It's now working on attack missile launcher. It's built and is working on its first missile. Doesn't yet have itself any kills. It's got a shield radar and tech two power. And quick check back over here. Looks like Wisp Willy Whistle. I'm wanting to call him Wispy Willow. Is determined to push this aside. Finally brushes the last factory off there belonging to El Tlion, who didn't even bother to start manufacturing. Already recognising that's a waste of time. And here's the first. So he's decided to go for the old Sparky. So he's going to take two uh, engineers here, the UEF combat engineers. And what's he working on? Well, he's backing off. This is interesting. Backing off to work on a tech two point defence. So perhaps thinking to hold the line here is a little ambitious. Uh, wait for Willow Wispy to come in. It's going to take him a few moments to work on this base. And during that time, maybe just buy himself enough time to build the point defense. But we'll I have to see because it's kind of important that the Hotties hold on to this. They've got one, the, the, another, what's that, about eight or nine mass points there. Uh, potentially more. And a lot of those are already at tech two. First crews are out now from the Hotties as well. And that's going to provide some long-range missiles as some much-needed air cover. And that will give Willow Wispy something to think about. You certainly just can't continue advancing without a thought when you've got a cruiser behind you that will shut down your ability to get air support in, as well as being able to just pick off 
uh, any sort of units at long range. You can see it going after individual. Oh, that was a, oh, it's a large splash damage to those missiles have. Here we see these tap missiles coming up. What's he going for? Well, so far, no kills. And I'm not sure if that got any kills at all or if it... It's like the hot is on top of the situation. So here's what we thought that uh, Willow Wispy was going to take some time to work through everything methodically here. And that's allowed L to the A on a little bit of time. He's got four tech two point defense from the UEF. That's going to be more than enough to cause a commander a moment of pause. And here we see why... Like each one of those connections were wiping off about 200 hit points from the commander. So that's about 800 hit points per round of shots. Also got themselves a shield as well as some tech one point defense. And I suspect that may be enough to dissuade Willow Wispy from continuing his advance there. And it looks like the Hotties now with a navy on the far side. And it's not just one or two units like before. This is a somewhat reasonable contingent. We've got a load of floating artillery as well. And this, if they get on with it, looks like they may be kicking the coolies out altogether. Some real nice team play here. Some bomber work from Superintendent. And what's he going for? At first I thought he was going to be going for the uh, tap missile defense. Well, looks like he doesn't know what he's going for. Oh, he's going for the commander. L to the Aeon. LX to get his dancing shoes out. And with all of those interceptors there, I'm not sure that the superintendent's going to get very much done at all. Tech 2 destroyer here from L to the Aeon, as well as the frigates. Although Buttons manages to get himself a destroyer online as well. Up here, on to L to the end, getting himself two kills before then taking down those engineers, rushing up some Tech 1 torpedo launchers. The stack defense there. Also got Ricky Ticky down here, working on UEF naval yards, who's got himself some uh, gunships online. The Stingers, and they're going to be good versus frigates and subs, even destroyers. Just don't take them too close to cruisers, and you'll be fine. Oh, um, be nice to see here these players working together. Judo together with L to the Aeon. It's like Judo moving in. They could shut this down. It's just a Tech 1 Navy Yard. It's got a lot of assists, so it'll certainly be worth the while to shut it down. And it's like Judo card there, 1972, going for it. L to the Aeon. A few units here out of position are going to get picked off for very little. Buttons there with some nice use of this destroyer doesn't just go balls in chasing for this one rather methodically dismantling the inferior forces there from L to the Aeon and that's going to be real nice I think he did lose a single frigate but he's bagged himself four naval units for that Ricky Tiki with a beautiful counter again destroyers and frigates very susceptible to the tech 2 air in this case gunships whether it's bombers or indeed torpedo launchers, but gunships will do. And there we see it, Ricky Tiki hanging on to a few naval units and a bunch of air. And now Buttons following up the attack, having dealt with those units there from L to the end. Some real nice teamwork there from the Coolies. I like that, and I felt perhaps a little bit of a missed opportunity from the Hotties. They certainly seem to have the numbers. What we got here... Oh, big artillery drop there from Judo. A Tech 2 transport ship full of Seraphin artillery pieces. And where are they due? Well, there's your answer. Buttons' is main base. Let's have a little look. Buttons is currently on 115 mass per tick. And so let's see if this does land. How much damage is he going to cause him? These are all capped off Tech 2 mass points. 124 for Buttons, having lost one of them. I like what Judo's doing here, keeping his Tech 2 transport. Puts out limited fire, 
But I think more important than that is providing a piece of intel. And he loses them all there, does Buttons, and he's now down to 100 mass per tick. Simi's chasing these units, but it's far too slow. And they're finding themselves here, what, another... All of these are tech 2 capped off. There is a tech 3 mass point that's capped off over here. And Buttons now with a perfect response to an artillery raid. And that is quickly produce some mech marines. The best way to deal with it, the quickest unit with the highest damage. And Buttons now to just 68 mass per tick. So he's about half what he was at his peak. And we see here his pal Willow Wispy helping out slinging tech 1 bombers at the artillery. And that's good. I don't think they're going to get any more done. These engineers have rapidly rushed some tech 1 point defense. That's going to slow these artillery pieces down. Yeah, they do take out one of them, but at the, yeah, there's only two left now. And now Stingers from Ricky Ticky. So some real nice teamwork there. All, all three players working together to deal with the artillery there. The only guy who didn't was Superintendent because he was the furthest away. So beautiful teamwork. But a very, very nice drop from Judo. Causing his opponent there, wiping out about half of his eco. It looks like the hotties have eased off their pressure. I mean, to look at this, the huge amount of navy. This is where I'd really like to see the hotties, you know, bring all this navy down. I don't understand why you're waiting back there when you've got navy here that's dying. The coolies working very well together with a limited amount of navy. And you can see here just how effective it is. One team working together with all of their units despite having an inferior number like what happened there Judo hands off that navy to Elta the Aeon to allow him to work together as one more cohesively and Elta the Aeon now pushing in just as Maizo is pulling out Maizo having lost of course that navy engaged there A couple of subs over here just going to town on some isolated frigates. But what really impresses me here is the cohesive team play from the Coolies. Although now it looks like Elta the Aeon with a huge number of frigates. And there's a few subs in the mix, but frigates is really where he's at. He's going to be able to cause so much damage. And this is, by the way, you want here Elta the Aeon to use the uh, Shift G command or the G command. All of these, he wants them here. And the only way to get Navy so close, it, like anything, use the Shift G. Got a lot of units over here that just feel like they're a little too far out of the way. You've got the Tech 2 Navy HQ here. And these units now... It's like, mm. Oh, he does have a few brought in closer. It's going to be close, though, because Ricky Tiki providing a huge amount of air. Thanks to Miser, though, with some ASF. He does shoot those down. Buttons as well, just some destroyers here from the UEF putting in long range pot shots. It's going to be close. The Navy HQ, which is three or four engineers just managing to keep it online. And a solitary frigate there. As well as a blaze. Fantastic plate. Come on, L to the A on, finish it off for goodness sake. Yeah, prep attention's got to be elsewhere. I mean, you've got at least half the Navy here dying for naught while these are taking all the brunt of it and are not achieving their objective. And he deals with the frigate. Some reinforcements now coming through from Mizo, those ships that we saw running away earlier. It's got a couple of counter... or at least one counter intel boat here. But he makes the... Uh, Carnal Sin are bringing the counter intel boat in range of the enemy navy. And that's going to render it absolutely useless. Oh, and terrible team play. Maizo moves in as L to the L moves out. And so both of these players moving in and out at opposite times. But what's this? L to the L says, look, I don't care that we don't move in at the same time. Because I brought a Tech 3 battleship online. Getting its first shots out inside the 23rd minute. And at least to begin with. Focuses on a Tech 1 Engineer. Once again, Elsteon 
A huge force here gets inside UEF shield from belonging to buttons that ate a huge amount of those hits. It's going to keep on pushing in, but push. I don't believe how Willow Wispy has been able to hold so well with so little. Again, it. I just love some of these games. There's a lot of lessons to be learned about how this naval combat engagement's been unfolding. Got a view of the minimap there, but for now it all seems to be about what's going on just here. I do like how LTDN is using this battleship, just putting in long-range shots. We can see here these engineers using two masts each to repair this naval yard. And they're, they're, at least for now, fighting a battle that they seem unable to win. So you could argue here, if you add all of these engineers up belonging to buttons, how many have we got? Cut. Uh, I can't quite tell, but altogether, so I don't know, at least 30. So you could argue there, Buttons is losing about 60 mass per tick trying to repair a naval yard that he can't possibly keep alive. That is, of course, assuming that uh, L to the yard maintains fire. But huge credit to Willow Wispy there, able to keep that online. Quick check over here. And Ricky Ticky dealing with some of this Tech 1 Navy using the old torpedo bombers. He's got at least five of them overhead. And they're going to get quite a lot done. He's got ASF of his own to protect. But it all really seems to be about what's going on down here. L to the L with a second battleship now on the front line. And the second one going for structures on Buttons' his main base. Picking off there one of the mass extractors. And that uh, Tech 2 naval yard there belonging to Buttons, he was actually trying to upgrade it to Tech 3 for some own reason. Can only have been an order from ways back when. And finally there, the battleship picks it apart. And I gotta say, despite a few mistakes here from some of the team play from the Hotties, it does seem like they're eventually going to win this one. Especially with one more battleships coming down here. We see the third one. Yes, some torpedo bombers here from Ricky Tiki. Uh, they're going to need some top. They're going to need either some cruisers or some ASF in the area. They're going to want to deal with that. And over here, some pricks. Some superintendent managed to break through and have pushed the hotties back quite away. If you remember, the hotties were all the way over here. Having uh, some mass points and an army on the front line. The Briggs pushed that back, but then Judo gets some crucial gunships out, pushes those away. And again, it just shows if you make an army with just one type of unit, it's rock, paper, scissors going to be completely susceptible to something else. You've got to make a bit of a mixture. Over here, L to the Aeon keeping all of these torpedo bombers busy. Redirects some of his spam towards Ricky Tiki's base. And Ricky Tiki forced to engage those spam units. And it looks like L to the Aeon desperately asking for air there, saying, Hey, this guy, and there you see it. Air please, he says. Air please. Who is going air for the hotties? Well, it's Mizo. Finally coming across. What's Mizo got? 40 ASF. And that looks like it should be enough. See Superintendent getting into the game as well with torpedo bombers of his own. And again, with just sheer numbers in the drink there that the hotties have been pouring down. Torpedo bombers or no. They've managed to get themselves this one. Also got a cruiser back here belonging to Judo with four kills thus far. Cruisers over here as well. And still Willow Wispy somehow hanging on. He's got blazes. He's using those to redirect some of this fire here. Hugely important. And Buttons absolutely intent not to give up on the waters. Just embarked on a massive naval yard construction campaign. And is now firing off barrages of TAP missiles together with static artillery. And those four TAP missiles... Turn three, but three of them connecting with the battleship take off a huge amount of health. And that Tech 3 battleship belonging to L to the Aeon is on the brink of going down. 
Willow Wisp knocking himself out an experimental there. Minute 28 on the nose. Yeah, these static artillery placements going long range and the uh, attack missiles there going after Tech 3. Battleships, hoping that L to the Air has forgotten about some of them. And a quick glance around the screen. Well, here's a Mungi Law belonging to Superintendent. That was zero kills. But uh, Willow Wispy, where's his? Oh, it's Azar. I was looking for a GC. No, it's a flying donut. Making its way north. And it looks like top on the menu is the base formerly belonging to Ferv that has been handed over to L to the Aeon. And thus far, I don't think the hotties have spotted it. There's something on radar, but that could be anything. And again, a little too slow to be a plane, but certainly could be a solitary gunship. Could certainly be a plane that's out of fuel. Until you get visual ID. And it looks like uh, Willow Wispy here is trying to sneak it round and go towards the back base belonging to Mizo. Let's have a quick look here. Well, they will have picked it up now. We've got these strap bombers here from Mizo that were in the right place. And so far, I think the hotties attention elsewhere. I don't think they've... Oh, and they have now. Look at this, Mizo. Orders coming in. He's seen it. In fact, there's the attack order. In he comes. And we also got this monkey lord going in over there. And it looks like Willow Wispy thinks, no, I'm going to bring it back round. I'm not entirely sure why. Just brings it back into the Air Force there belonging to Mizo. Then turns round once more. And Ricky Tiki, unfortunately, going down there, L to the Aeon. But here, this feels like a much more important engage. Going after the main base there belonging to Mizo and instead goes down for naught. And that leaves a huge wreckage right on Mizo's doorstep there. Uh, let's see, come on. Are we going to get it yet? Not yet, not yet, not yet. There we go. 18,000 mass right on his doorstep. Again, no offense to Ricky Tiki, the 789 rated player. The lowest rated player in the game, but with a name like that. Uh, fantastic. I really do like that one. Unfortunately, there, Ricky Tiki going down to relentless pressure here from the hotties. L to the Aeon getting the final shot. And he's laughing. Miser says it almost got me. It's L to the Aeon left. Yes, it did. Uh, Mizo was paying attention. I think were it not for, for that uh, perhaps slightly strange reason, Willow Wispy, you saw him, he was initially moving it this way. Then he turned around, went for something over here, then moved back in. That delay going back and forth, I think if he hadn't done, he would have been able to cause some serious damage to Mizo's base. It's questionable whether he'd have been able to kill him or not, but certainly inflicted a large amount of damage. But back down here, seeing that the coolies are all put out now. I'm surprised it's taken the hotties as long as it has. And to be fair, they've still not completed their mission. Still got a few structures here in the sea belonging to the coolies, but it's not too long for this world. But let's have a quick look now at this monkey lord. It's already got itself 129 kills. It's very low on health. It's a two-star. Just a couple of kills away from becoming a three-star. Oh, my goodness. Agon itself, some interceptors. And there it is, three-star. Going for engineers, tech one point defense. Tech three mass extractors are a huge way to gain VET because they're no danger to you, but they're very expensive mass structures. So the enemy gains a lot of vet with them. And like here as well, Superintendent Flank in his Monkey Lord with a bunch of AA, the walking Sam sites. Couple of bricks and all. That's going to be good to just put down some extra fire. And the Monkey Lord on the brink of becoming a four star. We saw how low it was on health. It's now got itself 19,000 hit points. It's just 1,000 mass worth of kills away from gaining its next rank of vet. 
Gaining itself, what's that? 85 hit points a second. It's repairing. <laughs> Shoots down a transport. And there it is. It's a four star now with 196 kills total. Else they are on throwing some fighter bombers at it. It's not sure whether he's actually targeting it or just hovering it over. On either way, superintendent looking at it well. Quick look elsewhere. Judo picks off a few aircraft over here belonging to Willow Wispy torpedo bombers, but it looks like the hot is completely in control. And what's this? Superintendent Telemazer jumps in. Tech 3 got the laser, got the teleport. Iso desperately trying to go after him. He's got Tech 2 surplus turrets. He's got a bunch of Tech 1 bombers, but it looks like he's going to get out. Oh, it's going to be close, but he does. Superintendent jumps out in the nick of time. There he is. He's a three star. That's going to alert the hotties to the fact that we've got a Telemazer ACU jumping around. And if not already, that's certainly a piece of information you want to ensure everybody on your team knows about. Meanwhile, we'll check back in on this Monkey Lord. It's a four star. Halfway on its way to becoming a five star. 231 kills to its name. I wonder how many kills it gets. Anybody remember without checking back to the thumbnail? And will it be enough to deliver the decisive blow? Finishes off there. Two or three more tech, three mass extractors. And with that is now a five star. Regenning 135 hit points per second. So an unupgraded commander could shoot into that all day long and would not be able to shed its health with just 100 points per shot. Assuming he never overcharged. Oh, but Superintendent is getting shot at. Oh, it's going to be close. Jumps out just as the Tech 3 battleship fire lands. If that had been one second later, he would have been dead for sure. Where is he? Well, there he is. He's actually, he's actually inside what was formerly the Hotties main base. This was their stronghold. And now Superintendent deep inside. There's the ping. First order of business is laying himself down a SAM site. And looks like he's here to stay. He's uh, planning himself on the old ion reactor and a factory. We'll check back in on the Monkey Lord and the anti-air he's got in the area now. 264 kills. And together with all these uh, walking SAM sites here, the bouncers... I see very little, at least initially, that the Hoys can do about this. They need to come up with a bigger and better experimental themselves. Large Air Force here from Willow Wisp going after torpedo. Well, these, these are Tech 3 torpedo bombers. And so these are very, very dangerous versus commanders. And with L to the Aeon's commander there in the sea. Sure, they're on the case. L to the... Look at him. Flies a transport in, does panic. And did any of these Tech 3... Well, they went for a Tech 3 naval yard there. It weren't the HQ, but they almost got it. Credit to him. Certainly made Elsa the Aeon panic there. He so quickly rushes transport out to his commander. And the Navy down here, relentless. just feel like the Hotties could be applying a little bit more pressure with some of this Navy here. But for now, we're going to check back in on the Monkey Lord. 296, 97. And there's 300 kills. 71,000 mass so far as this Monkey Lord put to bed. And Incy Wincy continues. Look at all those exhaust pipes out the back. Disgusting, unenvironmentally friendly. Incy Wincy thinks, stuff you! I don't care about the environment. I'm here to care about war. And Ping's continuing to go down. No doubt the hot is thinking, we've got to come up with some sort of plan to deal with this. I don't know exactly what, because he's got a shed ton of anti. Yeah, in fact, how much? Let's just have a little look. Just here. We've got 15 bouncers just there in the area, belonging to Superintendent. And it's at 1,060. Guys, this, it's not like this is an Uber, bro. 
1,063. And so you could argue he's a hair north of the average typical player. But he's certainly not looking after his experimental like an average. He's looking after his experimental like nobody I've ever seen. Certainly, many people can take a leaf from this. He's got lots of cover. It's not just throwing it in balls to the wall. He's using it nice and methodical. 306 kills thus far. Five star. And it looks like he wants to go after this naval yard. And for now, at least, using the long-range cannon to deal some damage to the T1 naval factories. Of course, it can't really do much from under the water, but it can go part way. What has we here? Atlantis, the UEF experimental aircraft carrier that's like a submarine. And there's two more here, and so buttons. I don't believe this. How have the hotties enabled buttons to get four experimental aircraft carriers in the sea like how has it even been possible scouting missions over here commanders over here but importantly incy wincy coming through 307 kills now superintendent and it's now going into el leon's main base which does have a few tech two point defense down but it's going to take more than a few of those when you've got a full health monkey lord that's five star, revving up 130 hit points a second. 135, I beg your pardon. And it's now putting a bunch of Tech 3 urn reactors to bed. And that's five of them. Huge wave of Tech 2 fighter bombers. That's perhaps a minor mistake there from Superintendent. Is air a little too far behind or his air defenses? But still a full health monkey lord there. Now going after L to the Aeon's main base. Quick check over here. What we got? A huge wave of torpedo bombers. Going after Buttons' this commander. Oh, and they're now firing in a nuke. Where's that come from? It's from the battleship. The Tech 3 Seraphim battleship. And Buttons' this commander. That couldn't have been much closer. Takes a nuke. Mouth wide open down through the throat and with that guts splattering everywhere thermonuclear style what a nice thought on once again it's Sunday afternoon and with that congratulations it's now a three versus two buttons bowing out there on the 40th minute but still monkey lord up here belonging to superintendent running rampage pinks continuously going down there from the hotties no doubt what are we going to do about this? And you see here, Superintendent, his anti-air is so far away, of course, it can't follow it. This here being a physical ridge that the, the units can't go down. And so this Muggy Lord now has got no defences at all versus the air. And it's just continuing to mop up. So come on. Mizo, perhaps uh, busy doing things elsewhere. But, you know, your team needs you now. 458 kills thus far. Ricky Tiki saying, come. I'm not so sure. I think they're just engineers and a brick. But you never know. Could have been a commander. Looks like Judo now going for a telly and all. But of course he's got now left. Solitary ion reactor here. It's going to need a little more than that if he's working on a teleporter. Quick look elsewhere. These naval ships here, huge value. Ten. Look at the vi five star, five star. Causing a right lot of bother there for Willow Wisp. But, you know, it's this. Oh, 500 kills now for the Monkey Lord. On. Oh, L to the Aeon has got to feel like crying. He's had this dealing damage to his base for ages. Finally, finally. Some Tech 2 gunships rolling up the Vulthus belonging to the Seraphim. And the Monkey Lord begins eating fire there. As it passes 528 kills. Quick look over here. And a load of Tech 1 subs. Do got ourselves another Kazar making its way over a donut. We'll check back on that in a sec. But for now, it really is all hands on deck. 
The Monkey Lord here does bag itself. The Navy HQ is now working on an aircraft carrier. 546, 547, 548. And with that, 548 kills. What is, if not the most successful Monkey Lord I have ever seen in 15 years that they've been going? You could argue longer if you just count pure Supreme Commander. And also a player that's uh, 1063. Well played there, Superintendent. Thank you very much for that. And with that, three versus two favoring the hotties. Let's have a quick look at the old eco as we approach. Minute 43 and 20 seconds. 597 versus 532 favoring the hotties. So a very slight advantage there to our, I like could say, northern, certainly northeastern team. Take a look at mass totals. About 150,000 favoring the coolies. A huge amount of aircraft carriers here, LT, and how many's he got? Well, I can't count, but a lot. Judo bows out. Yeah, there's at least 15 Tech 3 aircraft carriers there, the Seraphim. Yes, he figured he can't get it. Elstion as well going down. And with that, it's a two versus one. Maizo controls all. Let's have a quick look. Maizo, oh my goodness, he's managed to get himself a Scathis. It's like 95% done. And what's Maizo doing himself? Let's have a quick look at his commander. I think he's working on Tech 3. Scath is like 98%. 99%. And there it is. Scath is online. Maizo. Minute 44 and 55 seconds. Completes the Scath is. And there it goes. A watering can of doom. As a GC there coming across. Might as well still working on his upgrade. Scathis. Might as well runs away to the north. In comes the Scathis fire. Oh my goodness, what was that? The support commander tele teleports in, causes the Scathis a large amount of damage, but it's not dead. Look at this! This can only be superintendent. Oh no, I think it all comes down to this. I don't think Maizo's seen it. There's pings going down. He keeps cancelling and then restarting. There's more Scathis fire going across. More pings going down. But I think Maizo must not be paying attention. There's a million pings and there he is. Ladies and gentlemen. He'd all but won. He'd got himself the Scathis. He had complete naval domination. He'd got air domination. He'd killed the monkey. The only thing he didn't have was Telemaser defense by his commander. Despite a million pings, Maizo lost it, ladies and gentlemen. 46 minutes, 10 seconds. I hope you enjoyed that one very much. And until next time, wherever in the world you may be, always nice to have you with me. Hope you're doing very well. And until next time, take care. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. See you. Bye-bye.